the scripture goes on to talk about why God came. He says, I have heard the cry of your people. I have come to rescue. And those are the words we need to hear right now. So back a few weeks ago, my kids were swimming in our pool in the back and they had floaties out in the pool. And every once in a while, we get this strange wind out of nowhere. And a strange wind came, picked up one of the tube floaties, flew it in the air over the house. The kid screamed and pointed, so I ran around and watched as the floaty flew out into the soybean field across the street. I just kept on rolling over these old corn stalks from last year. I'm like, oh, it's going to pop. I just know it's going to pop. It rolled and rolled, I would say, a little less than a quarter of a mile out, and then halfway deflated and landed. And I thought for a while, well, what if I just leave it out there? Then I realized it would kill all the plants it was on, and I thought, I can't do that to Brian. So I had flip-flops on, and I was like, eh, I'll just go take a walk. So it's really hard to walk through new soybeans and old corn husks. You don't want to step on a plant and kill it, and you don't want to cut yourself on a corn husk. So I'm sure anybody driving by saw me going like this. (laughs) For a quarter of a mile, stepping over each plant, each plant, because they were in rows like this. And I walked, and I walked, and I walked. And I walked about to that patch where most of the water settles. See, I know that field well now. Um, And I got to the floaty, and I picked it up, and I said, I really don't want to go out the same way I came. (laughs) I mean, that that was excruciating. And I looked out and realized that there was a clear dirt path in front of me, and I thought, well, what if I just follow that out to the street? It would take me out to, to Layton, and I could just walk. I kind of went around. And so I began to walk in my flip-flops this dirt path, kind of a clean, hard dirt path. And as I began to walk, I became mesmerized in that walk. I was entranced and focused, and then at that moment I realized that God had placed me smack dab right in the middle of the largest labyrinth I'd ever been in. I don't know if you've ever walked a labyrinth for spiritual reasons. There's one out at Davis Park I walk all the time. Um, A lot of seminary classes, we'd build one and walk it, but somehow it focuses me just seeing my feet go one in front of the other and knowing there's a clear path to follow, it's one of the best places I've found to talk to God. (laughs) And here I was with my head cleared, my thoughts quiet, a place in which God (laughs) had chosen to speak to me. At that moment, I knew this was God's way of getting my attention. (laughs) Took me all the way out in the middle of a soybean field. God led me into the middle of a soybean field to speak. Strange wind. (laughs) A whirlwind when there was no wind. God had to do the same thing to Moses. Moses, for 40 years, had been shepherding sheep for his Midianite father-in-law, Jethro. Now, who is Moses? Moses was a man born of a Hebrew mother. At three months, put in a basket, floated down the river to save his life, and then adopted by an Egyptian woman, Pharaoh's daughter given an Egyptian name, and he grew up. But as he got older, he began to relate to the Hebrew people more, and one day he saw a Hebrew being beat by an Egyptian, and he lost it and killed the Egyptian. And in fear, he fled out to the wilderness. 
in the wilderness, he found a Midianite family to live with, and he became a shepherd. So for 40 years, he tended sheep. And I would think after 40 years on the same land, it could get a little predictable, monotonous, wouldn't you think? No. No? (laughs) On the same 40, 40 years on the same land. Wait. You would know where all the good grazing places are, where all the water holes are. The only psych excitement would be the occasional like viper or wild beast that would come. So in the solitude of the wilderness, I am sure Moses probably talked to himself a lot. I'm sure he talked to his sheep a lot as well. But little did he know that today he would be talking to God. The day started like any other. I'm sure he had pretty leathery skin from being outside in the sun all the time. Leathery skinned, 80 years old, expecting nothing out of the ordinary. He was out at Mount Horeb, the mountain of God, as the sheep grazed quietly. And then something caught his attention out of the corner of his eye, like a a flash. And he looked and he saw that it was... Oh, a bush was on fire. Well, out there, things are spread out and super dry. Usually, they would blow up in flames and then fizzle out. So it didn't really bother him that much. He knew the fire would be out in a minute. Yet, he didn't see any smoke. It didn't fizzle out. It was still on fire. It was a steady, powerful flame. This got him curious, and he... He moved a little closer. He wanted to see what was going on, and he got a little closer. And I'm sure he stared at it for a while, like any of us would, trying to figure out what was going on. And it says Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So he got even a little closer. This is exactly what God want it. This is what God had used to get Moses' attention. Something that wouldn't make him take his sheep and run out of fear, but something instead that would draw him near. Something that would break the monotony of his life and thoughts enough for him to open his eyes and turn his head. Say, this is different. Something that would open his mind and be ready to hear. His curiosity now has his mind open and wondering. Moses wanted to know why it wasn't fizzling out. And it says, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look right where he wanted him. God called out to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And guess what? Moses heard it. Moses heard God. This is the beautiful part of this scripture. He heard God speak. He heard his name being called by God, Moses, Moses. And he knew it was God. And he said, here I am. God had carefully crafted that moment just for Moses. God led Moses to the burning bush to speak. God had a lot to say. And God had carefully crafted the experience of the Zoe being labyrinth for me. God led me in the middle of a Zoe being field to speak. (laughs) What is God carefully crafting so that he may speak to you? 
What is your burning bush? Now you might say, well, burning bush experiences are for people like Moses, right? Moses is a big deal. He's a biblical figure that was powerful, who did a lot for God, and I am not Moses. A lot of people compare themselves to Charleston Heston's Moses holding the Ten Commandments. But what if I were to tell you, you are no different than the Moses at that moment at the burning bush? Moses is an ordinary person doing an ordinary job. He is humbled. He is quiet. And he never felt like he belonged anywhere. He knew his people were being oppressed. But who was he? He felt powerless. And therefore, he retreated to the wilderness. He was going about his life in pursuit of nothing great and not even expecting God to ever show up. At age 80, possibly he believed he was past the age that anything new would happen. He was simply existing. Now, this was the Moses, though. Before he freed 400 Hebrew slaves from the Egyptians, this is the Moses before the parting of the Red Sea. This is the Moses before the manna from heaven or the Ten Commandments. This is the Moses before God empowered him by the very words he spoke at the burning bush. What will be your burning bush? I can guarantee you that God right now is carefully crafting a burning bush experience for you so he can speak. The reason I know this is that walk I had out in the middle of the soybean field, it went a little something like this. <laughs> Holding a floaty in flip-flops in the middle of Brian's field. <laughs> Walking so I don't have to step over everything. The moment I realized I was in a labyrinth, God, you really want to speak to me, don't you? God said, yes, I want to speak. I go, okay, what do you want to say? He said, I want to speak. I want to speak and people listen right now. And right now that is not happening. He said, right now the world is hurting so bad. Yet all that is being done is opinion after opinion after opinion after opinion after opinion after opinion are being spoken and spoken. And nobody is listening to each other, and they're especially not listening to me. I want to speak. I said, so speak. And God said, I want you to tell Bethel that I'm going to speak to them individually. I'm going to speak to Jeff. I'm going to speak to Stephanie. I'm going to speak to Tara. I'm going to speak to David. I'm going to speak to Tommy and Marla and Donna and Jerry and Sharon and Irvin, Kathy, Brian, Chris. Say your name out loud. Okay. And then all of you watching, too, the names just poured forth. That says, I have something to say and I want to speak. Tell them I want to speak. He said, I have something distinct and personal to say to each person. God has a message 
for each of you. And you wouldn't believe his message. I know Moses was afraid when he realized it was God because it is powerful. The moment it hits you and the moment you realize that God is speaking to you, you are overwhelmed. But the things God has to say are good. There are messages of words of encouragement that you need now. If you're somebody who's barely holding on right now, God has a word to lift you up, to strengthen, to encourage. If you're somebody struggling, maybe God has a conviction and will point right to where your struggle is, where your sin is, where your brokenness is, and says, this is it. Let me help you lift that. And God has a word of grace for you. If you've ever been washed by the grace of God through Jesus Christ, God will give you that when he speaks. You know that shame that sits here and the guilt? When you go to bed at night, it just on you. God will say, let me take that. And he will begin to pour over you words of love and worth. It's the most beautiful thing that can happen you begin to hear him speak and also something God said is he wants to um, tell you how much it means that you've remained faithful through the harsh realities of this world through the loss of loved ones through sickness you've remained faithful those words will change your life, give you a new beginning. The other thing that may be distinct upon you is a call. Now, Moses was 80, so don't throw out any excuses of why God wouldn't call you into a God-imagined reality of what he can do through you. You have gifts in you, maybe you don't know you have or you don't know how to use them. God is going to speak. God is going to speak. So what I want you to do is keep your eyes open. God is carefully crafting a burning bush experience for you. Mine happened upon me. Moses's happened out of probably the corner of his eye at first, but he looked, and I looked. Two examples of burning bush experiences, just so you can start thinking and get your mind open. It happened in the last year all around Justin Bays, and you've heard pieces of it. December 24th, in the hospital, very, very sick. I was standing there on the third floor, and I looked out the window, and kid you not, a monarch butterfly flies right here over the building and, and gone. <laughs> I stood there. The possibility of that is so, so slim. It was a strange, warm day. Monarchs are migrate. They only come back in July. So some strange butterfly must have been in its chrysalis froze came undone during that warm time, but I kid you not, it was split second here, gone. If it was a split second later, I wouldn't have seen it. Burning bush experience, and in that moment, God spoke words of great hope, like amazing, amazing hope to me. The other burning bush experience was the eagle. Again, at Justin's burial, we were all standing around, and we, the moment we began to sing, all fly away, an eagle just happens to come and fly ahead and over us for two verses, choreographed. And the last verse of all fly away, he flew away. <laughs> that, for many of us, spoke the great joy and the truth of eternal life. I can't.
can't wait for you to hear God speak. Those moments are powerful, mind-blowing. For Moses found that out, and he even cowered from it some and said, Oh, no, wait. (laughs) This is a little too much. But God says, I am with you. And so, continue to look, to see, to wonder, what will be your burning bush? I tell you, there won't just be one. (laughs) Once you have one, you'll be ready for the next. God has a lot to say. Be ready to listen. Amen.